I'm Billy Bush. I'm a producer, engineer, mixer here in Los Angeles. And I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough um, of a song I mixed for a band called The Boxer Rebellion from London. And one of the things about the band is they really like a lot of space. They like a lot of reverb. They like a lot of sort of sonic textures within their songs. And for me, the, some of the Waves plugins have really helped define what it is that they're looking for sonically. So to start, I'll roll a bit of the track real quick so you can get an idea of what the song is like, and then I'll walk you through some of the parts. So when they first brought the track to me, like we knew it was going to be really epic, sort of big sounding track. And one of the things they wanted to do, Nathan in particular loved about um, processing his vocals, was using a lot of reverb. And the way I tend to approach reverb, particularly on vocals, is I'll use a couple of different ones. I'll use a short room, I'll use a long room sometimes. Um, and then I'll have a couple of other ones which are more sort of effecty, special effects ones, like really long plates, really, really long, um, you know, sort of modulated reverbs. But on this one, the one that I really was happy to discover that the uh, Waves had just modeled was the new Abbey Road plates. Now, I've been a fan of all the stuff that Waves has done with Abbey Road so far, with their EQs and their desk, um, models, and I was really excited because I feel like the Abbey, the plates at Abbey Road are really unique. So, real quick on the plug-in here, um, the first thing you see, you know, they have the image of the plates. The thing I like is that they went to the trouble of not just modeling one of the plates, but they modeled all four of the plates that they have there. And what's interesting about that is that the plates, all plates sound different, and particularly the Abbey Road plates all sound different. I'll give you an idea real quick of what it sounds like without this one and what it does to the vocal on the verse here when it's in. So the vocal without any effects on it sounds like this. And when I bring the, the plate reverb in, for the first time in my life I have seen. Now to me, you know, it's like when you hear it like that, you kind of feel like, wow, that's a lot of reverb. You know, it's gonna take up a lot of space. But what's interesting in the track, when you listen to it, It actually sort of doesn't seem as as much reverb as you think. Um, one of the things I like about this particular model, the D model, is it's the, the plate that has the tube output. When you drive it a little bit and add a little bit of the analog noise to it, it really brings out um, a certain sort of texture to it that I feel helps it kind of sit in the track really well. Now, I'll, uh, roll through a little bit of the verse here and I'll flip to the different plates and you'll hear how they all sound different compared to each other. Big ideas Big ideas Big ideas. Big ideas. So you can see how each one of them, even though all the settings stayed exactly the same, you know, they all have common settings, just the models of the plates themselves sound all completely different. They um, have different textures, and I find the more I mess with them, that I use them 
different plays for different things. On vocals, I've been really gravitating towards the D one, because for some reason, like I said, with vocals, it seems to kind of fit on the track really well. And on drums and some guitar stuff, I've been using A and B quite a bit. The plugin has its usual sort of um, routing you would expect from a plugin like this. You get inputs, um, the length of the delay here on the damper. You got an EQ, um, pre-delay, the drive, the dry wet percentage, the analog, and the output. And one of the things I liked about it initially, because when I get a plugin like this, and particularly if it's analog, an analog model plugin, I try to find ways I can kind of, you know, make it do something extreme. And one thing I liked about the D plate is when you really push it. Big it distorts in a really kind of good way. Um, it adds a nice sort of crunch, which is kind of fun for certain things. Big like it becomes almost kind of like the special Big effects. Which I found really interesting. And I love that Waves goes to the trouble of modeling all the analog stuff they've been doing lately in a way where they capture if you do something extreme to it, how it would react in the real world. And it becomes something usable. Like the Shep 73 is a good example of if you really crank up the distortion on it, it really does something spectacular. Um, and this one does a similar thing. Like it does some really cool effecty sort of things that I don't really see happen in a lot of other plugins. In the chorus section on this song, I had a different plate set up because the vocal goes a little faster and it needs like the length of the delay in the verse doesn't really or the length of the reverb in the verse doesn't really work in the chorus. So give you an idea what the chorus sounds like on this. I feel lucky when I was So for that, I changed it to a uh, shorter reverb time um, because the vocal's faster and I don't want the reverb to really sort of take up too much space. I have the pre-delay on it and that was pretty much the only difference. Still the same plate, but to me, like it completely changes the texture and feel of it, of the vocal. You know, so you come from the beaver section, which is, those are the only two differences. <laughs> It seems like it's much more lush and long. And then when you just change the pre-delay and the length of the reverb for the chorus, it still feels like it's in the same space and makes sense in the song. It's not a complete scene change but it does have a completely different texture. Like all of a sudden everything gets a little bit more energy to it. Um, that's what I really, one of the things I really love about this particular plugin. Um, also using it on this track on the snare drum. So what I did here was I've got a snare and then I copied the snare here. And I gated it much harder to send it pre-fader to another plate. So that way I've got the normal sort of um, organic sounding drum kit happening, but then I've got a really short, really hard attack sort of snare. That's the same snare, but it's just gated and pushed really hard into the reverb just so I can have it have a little bit more space. So without the, the uh, Abbey Road plate, you know, it just has like a decent snare drum, but with it. And again, I'm using, I'm using the A plate on this one, with no drive, 
and very little pre-delay just to get the reverb a little bit away from the attack of the, of the snare itself. And it just to me makes the, the drum sound really big and, you know, epic sounding. <laughs> So you see when I mute the, the plate reverb on that, like the drums don't sound like they're in the same space as everything else. And they sound punchy and nice, but they don't really sound as sort of big and epic as everything else does, at least in my opinion. Because I've always been a really big fan of using plates to create a sense of space for electric guitars. Um, you know, the a lot of times, I'll start with using delays to create a sense of space. I like, you know, when a guitar player has got a specific sort of setup he likes and like pedals and he can create a delay in a space that way. And this is a perfect example. The verse guitar in this song is... He's got a uh, reverb, a delay, a couple of different delays going on. It's a great texture. It's mono. Um, and one of the ways I like to use the, the Abbey Road plates is by being able to create more of a stereo field with a mono sound like that. So in that situation, like here it is with no, uh, without the Abbey Road plate. <laughs> It sounds great, but it feels like it's right there. You know, it's in one spot. It's not in the same space that the drums or the vocals are in, but if you add a little bit of the Abbey Road plate, in this case, I'm using the B plate, which I feel works really well with guitars. Like that really creates a nice sort of sense that it's in a bit of a space without using a real space. And I guess that's one of the things I really like about plates is they create a sense of space and depth, but without really doing it the same way a normal reverb would. You know, because it is this one sort of lengthening of the sounds and spatial element of the sound that isn't necessarily tricking your mind into thinking that you're in a small room or a wooden room or a, you know a concrete room or a big room it just gives you a sense of space and allows the instrument or the vocal to kind of fit into a track in a very organic way without it seeming like it's all necessarily recorded in the same studio um, this one for me you know again really makes that guitar kind of fit in the track To me, it just, you know, when I take the reverb off, it just feels like it's a little disjointed in a specific location. And if I put the reverb in, it feels more a part of the music without changing levels or anything like that. And I think that that's one of the things I really gravitate towards um, Abbey Road reverb plates. Because it really they really do kind of feel like the, the real thing to me. The other elements I like about the reverb plates, and I think I touched on this a little bit before, was the ability to do things to them that you wouldn't normally be able to do. I'll give you an idea. Let's put this in. So we'll save, mute it. Just hear the reverb return on it.
it's, I always like to try to find a way to use something in a more extreme and sort of creative fashion than just sort of how you would atypically use something like a plate reverb. And I like how, you know, for sound design, you could do some really interesting things. Like imagine... To me, like I find like something like that is really kind of interesting. Not maybe not right for this particular song, but in going down a path of trying to find a new sound or something creative, something fun that I've never heard before. Like I would hear that and I would think, oh, that's kind of cool. What if we run a synth through it? Or what if we change the guitar part a little bit or maybe added some extra delay? We could create this incredibly cool ambient kind of Brian Eno-esque pad out of this really super long reverb and maybe have a delay feedback on itself through the reverb. And it would be, to me, like that would make me excited. You know, it would be something cool and unique sounding and not necessarily as um, straightforward as one would normally use a reverb like this. Um, so let's get this back to where it was. For the first time in my life I have seen 